following is a special presentation of ESPN on ABC. A sense of pride and determination pulsed through a city of heroes, of steel, craftsmanship, and soul beyond its music. Made in Detroit means something again. Calling upon senses far beyond the familiar five, drivers are led by a heightened awareness, allowing them to act without thinking, react without blinking, to overcome adversity and maximize opportunity. The duel in Detroit is great. Mike Conway jumps out in front early. Oh, we have contact. The two car of AJ Allmendinger. Whoa, trouble. Briscoe. Briscoe is into the barrier. Drivers must dial in all their senses to endure or conquer the one-of-a-kind blue-collar grind of back-to-back -back races on Belle Isle. Race number one in Belle Isle belongs to Mike Conway. What a superb drive by Conway. You're looking down at Belle Isle, Michigan. It is the largest public park in America, and it's the site for the second round of the duel in Detroit. And boy, if you were with us yesterday, we had ourselves one heck of a motorsporting race, as it was Mike Conway dominating up front, and a lot of guys trying to catch him and making some great passes from behind. Eddie Cheever, Scott Goodyear. Eddie, let's first talk about Mike Conway. What a great drive yesterday. He had that very rare thing in racing, which is the perfect race. Every time he had to make a move, he did it quickly and cleanly. He definitely knew how to get by enemies in his way, as he does here with Hunter Ray, gets by him, and then just disappears. He had the best car, and his pit stops were impeccable. His team did everything they had to do to win, but not only win, but win by a very large margin. The man in the middle there is Dale Coyne, his team owner, and what a story here. You know, Dale Coyne used to race cars himself, but it took him 25 years to win his first race. Now he's got first and third in the podium. Mike Conway, I think, has a great shot at repeating here today, Marty. Well, and as many of you were with us yesterday, you know that Mike Conway gave up racing on the ovals, and here's the reason why. Two horrific crashes. In 2010, up into the catch fencing. Now you can watch, you can see that he drives up and over Ryan Hunter Ray at that time and into the catch fencing. He did that again in 2012, and he was smart enough at that time to say, you know something, I do not like racing on ovals. I have a road course background. I'm going to stick to road courses, and boy, he did a great job yesterday. And anybody out there who questions his decision, I would challenge you to climb into the cockpit and See how many times you want to fly into the catch fence like that before you would decide to climb out. Let's talk to the man who won yesterday and his teammate who finished third. They're with Rick DeBrule. Well, Mike Conway is so good. He was able to jump into a car he'd never driven before with a team he'd never driven for before and win the race. But he did it with a little help from his teammate. That's because he was able to use Justin Wilson's setup. And here's the question. You have a chance at a $50,000 payday today if you can win both races. Are you going to share any of that with Justin? Yeah, no, I think I need to. He's, uh, you know, given me a great car all, all weekend. And it's, uh, you know, been a pleasure to drive. And obviously a big thank you to Justin and the team for, you know, giving me such a great car. So, um, yeah, no, but 50,000 50, sounds pretty sweet. Um, it will definitely, uh, you know, pay some bills for a while. All right, let's talk to Justin because, Justin, I understand that you started with the same setup but moved away. Did you go back to the setup that now Mike's using? No, the cars are very similar, but I just drifted away slightly and we, we did a little bit more this morning and it feels even better. So it's just trying to find what suits, you know, the, the driver and um, where we are now is, is what I like. And, you know, just slight differences between myself and Mike, but uh, otherwise they're pretty close. All right, Mike Conway, you'll notice, is still wearing his generic black and white driver suit. Maybe if he wins $50,000, he can hopefully get something a little better if he's back in that Sonny's car. Now for the guy who finished in between these two, well, he's standing by with Jamie Little. And Ryan Hunter Ray brought it home a second yesterday, but afterwards, Ryan, you told me the one place during the race that you were beat was that midsection, that middle stint. What can you do today to ensure that doesn't happen again? Well, we did some things to the uh, DHL Chevy this morning that, that should help on, on red tires, but on the alternate tires. But We'll have to see. You know, it's different conditions this morning and uh, than this morning. So um, I hope we have it. I mean, it was sure quick. The guys were quick on the pit stops. We had everything we needed. But um, Mike Conway was just a bit quicker So on the Reds. But uh, I'll go down a couple sun drops here and get ready to go for a second race. All right, the defending series champion will roll off fourth today. Vince Welch. Former series champion and former Belle Isle winner Scott Dixon hopes to have a less eventful day today than he had yesterday. You know, early in yesterday's race, Dixon took contact from A.J. Allmendinger, and the uh, target team had to get busy.
as he on pit lane replaced the rear wing assembly. Dixon fell back to 24th, but he recovered and then charged through the field to salvage a fourth place finish. It was a very impressive run past a lot of cars at Detroit. You don't say that very often, but you certainly did. What about yesterday's run and charge to the front encourages you that today may be another day in victory lane? Well, I think, you know, for the most part, we're starting a lot closer to the front. You know, yesterday was, uh, you know, we got caught up in a lot of stuff in qualifying, especially in the first uh, Q1. Um, so it made it a bit frustrating, but the car's very quick. You know, I think you saw a lot of people that had strong cars yesterday work their way to the front. And it's a great part about the layout of the new track and, and what Penske and everybody in his organization has done. You know, they've created a fantastic track, a track that we can really race. You know, I went back to 25th position. I think we got two or three people in the pits. Um, but past everybody else on track. So, uh, you know, I'm excited for today. I think we've got a great car, both myself and Dario. Dario's a little bit further back in the pack today, but uh, I'm excited, man. It's going to be a great race. Should be fun. Keep an eye on the nine, Scott Dixon. Let's go to Marty. Uh, thank you, Vince. And Scott Dixon will roll off seventh today. You want to talk about parity in the league? Five different winners from five different countries in the last five races, including America's Ryan Hunter Ray, Japan's Takuma Sato at Long Beach, Canada's James Hinchcliffe, as he won twice this year, Tony Kanaan at the Indianapolis 500 in England, Mike Conway from yesterday here at Bell Isle. Who wins today? Well, that's why we're here. Stay with us to find out. The skyline of Detroit in the background as we're on Bell Isle as we're getting ready for race number two at the Indy Duel in Detroit, just a little over 10 minutes from going green. It has been a very difficult stretch for the Indy car drivers. In three weeks, we go from Indianapolis, where you have 200 laps, 800 turns, and 2.5 Gs in loading. Here, look at the number of shifts, 4,200 in two days, oh, just under 2,000 turns. And then next week, you'll see this race on ABC, Saturday night, 8.30 Eastern, 24 degrees of banking, four Gs of stress. Well, here's how one man deals with it. Vince Welsh has the story on Alex Tagliani. Well, Marty, this is one of the most physically demanding tracks on the IndyCar Series schedule, and that's one time a year. Can you imagine running it twice in the same weekend? Back-to-back -back days makes it particularly grueling and puts your body to the test. Here's a look at one way Alex Tagliani prepares his body for the rigors of racing. In preparation for the dual race here in Detroit, I went a step further with the help of a friend of mine. We brought a hyperbaric chamber here in the hotel room. It's very well known from athletes. Their recovery time for a broken wrist or broken ankles is very, very quick. If you're using it and you don't have any broken bones, you're just using it to uh, having personal body recovery from any sort of damage you think you have. But mostly is the hydration that it helps a lot. This is awesome. I can sleep in here, basically. After a session of hyperbaric chamber, I feel all recharged. It's pretty cool, actually. Um, didn't have to drink three liters of water to uh, recuperate and get rehydrated. You know, hopefully tomorrow will be all business and everything will work good and uh, we'll run up the front all race. If the engineer asks me to qualify all race long, I think we'll be ready to go. Yeah, it's impressive indeed, the level of uh, health and fitness in the paddock area. Dario Franchitti, I don't want to say you're the, well, how about just the most experienced veteran, exactly, not the oldest exactly guy? The <laughs> uh, how difficult is it? It's tough enough at this place one day, but back-to-back, -back, how tough is it? You know, it's, it's difficult, but a lot of work was done by everybody in the field leading up to this race. The big difference this week is we don't have the recovery time. Normally, we've got a couple of days, so, um, you know, everything was kind of compressed last night, and we, um, you know, we just... We're a little, I'm a little stiff today. I spoke to Dixon about it, the neck, uh, just with the bumps here, but we're, we're okay. Dario Franchitti, he's been a winner here before, look to do it again today. Well, he's going to have his work cut out for him. He'll be starting 16th today as the rest of the field is looking towards chasing down Mike Conway. He won yesterday, and he'll start from pole today. Yesterday, we told you the first race was 1928 here in Detroit. F1 raced in Detroit seven times. Bobby Rahal won the first Bell Isle race in 1992. Mike Conway, of course, won yesterday. Who wins today? Let's find out. Let's go trackside. Ladies and gentlemen, and now for the most famous words of motorsports, a custom that originated at the greatest spectacle in racing, the Indianapolis 500. Here to give the command, General Motors Chairman and CEO, Mr. Dan Ackerson. Drivers, start your engines. Scott, uh, we'll warm up and uh, 
position one while you're there as you roll out. We'll go to eight. So the engines come to life in all 25 cars, and let's get a last-minute update from Pit Lane. Vince Welch, you're up. Every time the IndyCar Series visits a road and street course layout, Will Power must be considered one of the favorites. But the Penske driver, who had won three times by now already last season, is winless this season. Yesterday, Power finished eighth, said he'd never worked so hard at a race he didn't win. He starts third today. Scoring his first win of the season would be perfect timing here in Roger Penske's backyard. Jamie? And A.J. Allmendinger's crash yesterday forced him to a backup car today. The crew worked till midnight last night trying to get the setup just right. As for A.J., you can see him looking at that left thumb. And just before he crawled in the car, he got two shots of cortisone because this morning in practice, he could barely grip the wheel. He had so much pain. Let's go to Rick DeRule. Well, Joseph Newgarden and the Sarah Fisher Hartman Racing Team deserve some award for creative perseverance. They were starting in the back of the pack yesterday. They knew it was going to take some creative strategy to get a good finish, but they'd done it before. In Brazil, they started near the last and finished fifth, and they did it again yesterday, starting 24th, finishing seventh. And guess what? They're starting 24th today. You can accept some more creative strategy if they hope we'll get at least as good a finish as yesterday. Thank you, Rick. And uh, let's take a look at this course because that change they made, Scott, really paid dividends. Well, 14 turns and 2.36 miles, turns one and two. A great place to pass going into turn one. You can see the old course last year, 2012. This new run down to turn three, a half a mile added on that run. Great place for passing. As you can see, all the cars here start to fan out. Great opportunity. You see everybody going on the inside. That run going up to turn four, another great opportunity. Roger Penske and team have done a great job of creating passing opportunities here on the tight Bell Isle track. Turns four, five, and that run up to six is very important. Coming off of six, you need a great run going down the straightaway. Entering into turn seven is a great passing zone. Got to get it done before you get into the fountain turns. 12, 13, 14, get a good run through there. Heading down to one possible passing. And then also confrontational sometimes on pit exit for drivers trying to get up to speed going in through turn two. Well, Mike Conway kept the trend going as far as starting positions. As you take a look at our starting field, it is now 11 out of 14 races here on Belle Isle where the winner has come from the first two roads. It's a very particular track. It, it's been very hard to pass in the past, but now they've changed the track and this, this widening and the lengthening of the straight going into turn three really makes a big difference. Scott Dixon today, for me, is somebody you have to keep your eyes up because yesterday he knew how to get through traffic. Also, Scott, uh, of the top 12 starters, only two have gone to the alternate red tires, and maybe we should explain the difference between the reds and the blacks. Well, the alternate red tires certainly give you more grip, but as we saw yesterday, those tires seem to fall off as they are designed to do. So teams have to come up with a perfect strategy, as Mike Conway's team did yesterday, of when to put those tires on versus the regular tires, which are the black sidewalls. We'll talk about that as we go throughout the event here today. Chance for us now to check in on our six onboard cameras from back to front. And Takuma Sato will start 21st with the Honda onboard camera. Well, I know I don't have to tell you, but we got a challenge today, so let's just try to get as many points as we can. We'll try to help you out in the pits. Boys are ready. And uh, we'll just try to survive this thing and see where we come out. Okay. Starting 19th with the Firestone onboard camera will be Tony Kanan in the number 11. Charlie Kimball and the Novo Nordisk on board. He'll be starting the field in 18th. Ryan Briscoe replacing J.R. Hildebrand yesterday, and he had an incident late in the race in the National Guard car. He'll start 13th today. James Hinchcliffe in the number 27 GoDaddy machine. He'll start 10th. And Ryan hunter Ray with the Firestone on board. He'll start 4th. And don't forget, you can catch live streaming of Ryan's in-car cameras on the IndyCar 13 mobile app. That's only from Verizon. Also want to remind you, our broadcast is available in Spanish by activating your SAP button presented by ESPN Deportes. There is Mike Conway. Sonax has put up a $50,000 bonus if he can win both races. He's the only one that can claim that bonus. Now, here are the guys that are starting on the red alternates. And as we mentioned, most of them are in the back of the field. 
We, we saw yesterday the red tire gave you some extra grip for a few laps, but it tends to get a little bit slippery towards the end of its run. Then yeah. and, and they will make a big difference, Scott. I think how you choose to use those tires could play a very important part in the strategy. Yesterday, the ones that didn't use them at the wrong time seemed to be at a disadvantage. And Eddie, it is a little bit cooler here today, about 10 degrees, so we'll have to see if that plays into the factor of how the tires wear. But the track does have a little bit more rubber on it than we started the weekend with, because this is a temporary circuit. The track will change throughout the race here today. Dale Coyne finished first and third yesterday. There he is. He has just wiped that smile off his face because now it's back to business. What a day they had yesterday. Will they repeat it? Well, we're getting ready to find out. If they make their way down towards the starting line. On the driver's right, you see the Sunnies number 18. That is our pole sitter, Mike Conway. Everybody on the restarts and the start picked the inside line. Everybody already starting to move. Green, the second green, race green, and the door of Detroit green, is green. green. Justin Wilson lightened up the tires into turn one. And Conway has done exactly what he had to do. He's had a clean start. He has to put a little... Oh, there's an accident behind. Big crash back at the exit of the corner. And it is A.J. Allmendinger. I'm wondering if that thumb had anything to do with it. He could barely grip he did, anything. He just cannot get a break here. He had the same similar problem at yesterday's race right at okay? the start. Yeah. It is. What happened? Uh, he's now taking his steering wheel off, which is where all the communication goes through. You hear Roger say what happened. We hopefully we'll have a replay for that. A.J. Allmendinger, absolutely one of the most talented drivers there is, both in open wheel, has done a great job, obviously, in NASCAR. And with the past issues he's had here just recently, he wanted to come out and make this all right, especially getting a second chance for Roger Penske. Disappointment, you could hear that in his voice. Now let's look towards the back, and you can see that right. the back end of the car starts to come around Eddie just as he's trying to apply power going up over that little bridge where there's a crick that runs underneath, and the back end stepped out. He tried to correct it, and when it came back over the far side of the hill, it got gripped and took him into the wall. So that is something that the driver feels awful about right now, and especially two days in a row. But uh, the captain um, has gone through a lot of these things, and he always supports the drivers. But at this point, I'm sure his mind has just turned over to the other drivers, and he has a race, a race to win. But I'm sure that thumb that he had definitely didn't help him when he went to correct. Those corrections are made instantaneous. Now, while all this happened, as you saw, there is Will Power in front of Mike Conway. And we'll try and figure out how that came about, because our camera, of course, stayed on the crash farther back in the field with A.J. Allmendinger. But uh, Will Power is our race leader as they've come across the stripe. And Joseph Newgard decided to top off. Why not? If you're running behind, you ought to stop and get some fuel, because you never know. That little bit of fuel might make a big difference, Ed. as does Ed Carpenter. Both make their way back out onto track. Feel so bad for A.J. Allmendinger right now, a guy that wanted to do so much this weekend to prove to Roger that he should stay on his team. And to date, this is the last event that he had scheduled with Penske Racing. So for A.J. Allmendinger, yesterday ended on lap one, today ended on lap number one. It's a weekend that he will definitely want to forget. All right, we're under our first caution for another first lap incident here involving A.J. Allmendinger at our Indy Duel in Detroit. Now, Will Power is in front of Mike Conway, but IndyCar officials are reviewing to see if the pass was made after the caution came out. Now, take a look. You can see where Conway is, and there's the crash. Now, at that point, the officials would definitely fly the yellow flag because there's obviously a lot of debris on the track, so it depends where and when Power passed Mike Conway. In relation to when the yellow flag came out. Came out. Exactly. So right now, race control is checking that out to see if Mike Conway and his Sonny's barbecue machine will end up staying in front on the restart, which is very important because track position is everything here. But then again, you don't want to let a guy like Will Power in front of you because if he does, he's the best on a street course, road course, that is, we've talked about. And certainly he could pull lead. Maybe he even knows that. He's just playing with Mike Conway right now by saying, I'll stay out here until they tell me to go back. Canaan is all the way up front again. Well, Canaan is up to the 14th position, and Tony started 19th. 
So he picked up five, as he did yesterday, and he picked up three in the first lap. Let's go back and show you some of the passing action that took place before the caution came out. On board with TK. Oh, squeezes through there. That's just past the start-finish line. Now he's going around the outside of turn one. His teammate, she battles back side by side over the hill. And that's exactly when the accident was happening. But he still gets a few more positions, and those positions may count until the yellow comes out. He's not now, just aggressive. He has an instinct to put his car in the right place. Do you see how he's in the inside there at the exit of two? The accident happened on the outside, so he's always trying to push the fact as, as quickly as he can. While we've got a moment, let's remind you the NASCAR Nationwide Series is heading to Iowa, 8 o'clock Eastern time next Saturday on ESPN. Joey Logano won yesterday at Dover, and don't forget, the Indy cars will be at Iowa Speedway. Mark your calendar. That one is June 23rd. So we are continuing under our first caution here, just as we did yesterday, as uh, the positioning of first and second is still under review by IndyCar officials. That is Will Power looking for his first victory and trying to get, claw his way back into the championship hunt. Marco Andretti, who was the points leader coming into yesterday's race, but uh, has found himself falling back and out of that after yesterday's finish. Let's listen in on his radio. Okay, since you got this, such a good start, uh, we're still thinking about stopping early, but now it's a little bit more different. Uh, hang with the tires as long as you can and hold your position as long as you can, and then we'll decide when we come in. That's awesome. So Marco Andretti running 11th right now. Now, he was one of five drivers that came into the race weekend who had completed all 100% of the laps run so far, but he and Takuma Sato fell out of uh, that category yesterday. Just got word from IndyCar officials, guys. No change at front. It is Will Power, your race leader. Mike Conway will line up on the outside as they make their way down towards the final turn. Up the straightaway. Green flag will be in the air. We'll be back to green, racing. Green, green, green. We're racing. Whoa, and look at the start by Conway. I would say it's game on for the lead. Conway gets through turn two, gets to the center of the turn much better. You can see Power's car slip just a little bit. Now let's watch under braking going down to this new turn three. Will Power just a superb breaker. Does he catch up to Conway? Absolutely. Boy, Dixon's looking further. EJ Vizo also goes around James Jakes. Now remember, Jake started on the outside of the front row and he's been going backwards ever since the start. Look at the pace that Conway has. He just picked up exactly from where he was yesterday. Heading down the straightaway. Just off the driver's left is the Detroit River, and you can see the gap already forming. Great shot from our helicopter. Up to 165 miles an hour, hard on the brakes through turn seven here, entering into what we call the casino turns. All concrete, very rough. A lot of drivers talked about how they got pounded yesterday, but we're just very early into this race, so any aches and pains will only be amplified. This is a very important part of the race for all of the drivers because you have to find your rhythm as quickly as you can. If Conway can put a bigger gap with power, power will stop thinking about leading and be worried about who's behind him. Ryan Hunter Ray as we ride on board. Let's just listen and watch him work that steering wheel. That's not good. He says he has a lot of understeer. So he's trying to get the car turned and it won't turn enough for him. Very difficult on a road course to go fast. Maybe it'll get better. Michael Andretti telling him to get the pressures up, which happens after you run for a couple of laps and maybe the car, the balance will change for him. James Jake's closing on EJ Vizo. Vizo in that number five Sitco machine. Jake's right behind him in the number 16. And there is Dario Franchitti lurking. Well, James Jakes yesterday was not happy with the car at all once the race started. He had a great weekend, but he started on the red tires. Today, a different decision. They've changed the car a lot, and they're starting on the black tires, the harder tires. As a result, he feels more comfortable going into this race, and you can see he's much racier today than he was yesterday. And let's, uh, let's remind you, Conway is on the blacks leading right now. Then it's Power and Pagano running the reds. And then from fourth all the way down through eighth, everybody is black on the, back on the black primary tires. back a little bit earlier 
On board with Takuma Sato. Graham Rahal right in front of him there. Whoa. Definitely some contact there. Now under breaking the turn three. Will he be able to get underneath him? Starting to stick his nose in. How much room will Graham give him? He had to drive over the gator bumps to be able to try to make that pass happen. Now he's on the inside again. It's all a question of how you position your car. If you position it in a place where they can't drive back over here, you can hold your line and get him on the next one as he did there. And guys, that was for 19th position on the racetrack. That's how deep the field is compete competitively right now. Dario Franchitti still trying to reel in James Jake. So Jake's, for the moment at least, has stopped the bleeding. Diso is having a much better race than he had yesterday. He seems to have solved his engine problems. At this point yesterday, he was going back very quickly. He seems to be quick today. Yeah, started on the front row yesterday and ended up finishing 17th as uh, they were having all kinds of engine issues. And here goes Jake's as he gets back around EJ Diso. It passed him several laps ago. A driver that just continues to impress everybody came over to this country, started to learn more about IndyCar racing, has been improved here for the last couple of years. And Jamie, you have more? Well, you guys mentioned that EJ Viso had problems yesterday. It was a mapping issue. The Chevy engineers had misplaced or put the mapping wrong, so they were able to download it, fix the problem. And on top of that, today, he said their car is much better, better handling than it was yesterday. Right now, he has the Iceman behind him. Dario Franchitti, a little bit further back. Scott Dixon right there in the nine car coming up strong as uh, we're going to have step aside just for a second after a word from your ABC stations. We're back at Belle Isle. Oh, no, and a crash. Simona Di Silvestro just hit the wall as we return here to Belle Isle. This will be our second caution. That is in turn number eight in the Fountain Complex. Simona was running 22nd at the time. We can tell you during the break that Andretti and Rahal both pitted, and here is the 10 car, Vince. Dario Franchitti, you see, taking off those reds and putting on the sticker blacks. Franchitti's car has been good in the early stages today, just as it was yesterday, clean and away and a quick one. Tony Kanaan, Tony Kanaan is in as well. Kanaan has been a big mover, up seven spots before this yellow. Also in, Sebastian Bourdais, Vautier, Sato, and Newgarden. And that, look at the skid marks. That's the biggest accident we've seen here so far. Well, you know, it's interesting because they were battling in amongst all of them side by side, even when we were away on a break. And I'm just wondering if they ended up going, trying to go two abreast through the turn. Well, we're going to find out. We've got several angles of this incident. Uh, just entering. And you know something? The car does not look like it's turning. Remember we, Tony had that two yesterday? accidents like that. Yes. Happened to Tony Kanaan during the warm-up today, but nowhere yeah. near this kind of damage. No, the steering rack, we've had uh, a couple of reports on that and the car not turning. And that is just disappointing because Simone is such a talented driver. Let's watch on board here and Charlie Kimball. See, that is just going straight. And remember Alex Tagliani yesterday under caution ended up in the barrier. They had a steering box problem. check on uh, Simona, make sure that she is A-OK, -okay, and she'll make the mandatory trip to the infield care center. It, it almost looks like they turn in not even half a lane off, and they get absolutely no grip from the concrete. Mm -hmm. And that half a lane off, remember, there's sometimes all the rubber that's coming off the tires from when they're wearing, the marbles, as we call it, gets offline. So sometimes that happens, but it's early in the race, Eddie, so I'm not sure that we have that much rubber down, that marbles that's usually accumulated onto the racetrack. Well, remember we talked about uh, the was five yesterday. It's now down to two because Simona will not complete every lap today. Uh, so now it's just Elio and Scott Dixon left. Keep an eye. We think maybe something may have come off her car. Oh, oh yes. yes. So that is into turn number seven. The crash happened in well, turn eight. Yeah, and that was on the right front, you know, something, and that looks just like a uh, filler plate. So I'm just wondering if the tire was flattened when she tried to turn and the car did not respond. So just understeered into the wall. So we'll have to get a report from the team on that. But disappointing for Simona. That is quite a hit. 
Well, this is still going to take some time to clean up, so uh, as they continue under caution. We had three cautions yesterday. We're under our second today with just 10 laps complete. Still under our second caution, we have caught up with Simona Di Silvestro. Let's find out what happened, Rick DeBrule. Yeah, back here in pit lane. That was a hard hit. We have to ask first, how are you okay? I'm all right, you know. It's definitely hard because there was no tires there, but not really sure what happened. You know, I went into the corner and the, uh, the like we just wouldn't turn and we hit like into the wall like straight ahead. So yeah, I don't know. No indication whether it was a flat tire because we see we can see something. It looks like you're going through here and it looks like you're hitting something yeah. and then it flies back up. But once again, no indication in your car when you went into the turn, there was just no grip. Yeah, nothing like uh, the tire just kind of locked up and it turned and it wouldn't turn. So we kind of went straight into the wall and you know, it was uh, frustrating because I think we we're moving forward. We had a, an OK car, you know, the nuclear clean energy car was OK. So, um, yeah, it's really frustrating because we're not quite sure what happened. And, uh, you know, it was at the beginning of the race, so it's uh, really annoying when you're out so early. Yeah, and unfortunately, that ends Simona's streak of finishing every lap of every race so far this season. It has been tough for those five. There's only two that are still standing that have completed every lap. That's Elio Castroneves and Scott Dixon. And uh, Simona? She's a very talented race car. She is. Circuits like this, she really gets the job done. It's horrible to see something like that happen so early on in the race. You know what I always recall back a few years ago where Simona was chasing Tony Kanaan at St. Petersburg, and Tony oh, was yeah. doing a lot of blocking, and then they end up on the same team together, and I would have loved to have been a fly in the wall in the uh, trailer when these two first they, started working they together. They get along great now. In fact, Tony's trying to get uh, Simona fixed up with a boyfriend, and back at Indianapolis, <laughs> it started. In fact, she said she was getting complete resumes from uh, gentlemen suitors. Right now, let's get back to the challenge at hand. Here comes Mike Conway, the race leader, again, choosing drivers right. Will Power right alongside. Then it's Pagano, Hunter Ray, Jakes, and green, Dixon. Green, green, green. You heard it. Hang on. And Power tried to repay the favor he got mm -hmm. on the last restart that didn't quite work. Everybody made it through turns one and two. Now down that long new straightaway, heading for turn three. Hunter Ray takes a look to the inside and even down deeper. Look at the 19. That is Justin Wilson and Elio Castroneves, and now more contact. And it is Tagliani and at least, I think, one other car Brian, involved in this. He cannot get a break here. Now, so far, we have not gone full force caution. You know what's amazing is, look at this traffic, is how fast Conway can break away from the group. Oh, it takes a little trust corners. But what's amazing is how racy this track has become. And Vizo, watch for him to try and go on the inside and crossover. He's on the five Citgo car now looking down the inside of Charlie Kimball. Can't get it done. Justin Wilson is right behind Vizo in the scouting number 19. Oh. And there's Dario Franchitti lurking as well. We are still green. Joseph Newgarden having a problem, now getting back underway. Now the full course caution has come out because We're they're getting out. closer to that accident area. He's missing a lot of pieces from the front wing. There is Tagliani. And four, can you do a lap before we stop? A lap before we stop? We got to pack up if we can. Bet you always liked hearing that on the radio. Well, I know the wing is broken. The you can in, uh, see that. Two now, and it's full course yellow. So we just need to catch up to the bunch. Then we'll have time to come in and fix it. But it doesn't seem to be very aggressive with the car. Now he's starting to pick up speed. And there's oh. Ed Carpenter in the fuzzies machine. So yeah. maybe uh, with some damage in the front there, that might tell you a little bit of something yeah. of who got together. Yeah, I thought I saw a second car involved. And there is the damage on Ed's car. From Tony Kanan's onboard, we'll be able to see what happened in front. Under braking. Oh, and watch this. Ed Carpenter coming in too fast, coming into turn three, ends up getting into the back. And there was a third Alex. car that got involved in that at the end. But you have to sort of pace yourself, don't you, Eddie, when you're going into the turn, because you know it's going to accordion. Everybody's coming up to turn. they got to stop. It's lap one. The tires are cold. You don't have grip. So much of that goes on. You have to prepare when you go into the turn for that. And Alex Tagliani has made it to pit lane. Vince? 
Well, what a frustrating weekend it's been for Tagliani. Had that steering box issue yesterday that ended his race early. Left him with a very sore and swollen left hand as well. Had some real uh, pain from that hand. As you see now, they're going to remove that front wing assembly due to the contact. They'll put another one on, investigating the rest of the car to make sure no other significant damage is done. But it looks like Tagliani's going to be able to get out and back under power. That definitely was not his fault. He got caught up in Ed's uh, mistake under braking, but... The mistake that you can make on these circuits is that you focus only on the car that's in front of you. Right. You have to look at least 50 to 100 yards every now and again to see if there is that accordion effect that you were talking about. And things on these street circuits happen very, very quickly. Tagliani's going to have to hustle to catch back up to this field because, as you can see, yesterday, three cautions. Today, three cautions. We're getting ready to go back to green flag racing. And again, it'll be Conway, driver's right. Then it'll be Will Power. Pagano, Ryan hunter Ray, Dixon is fifth, James Jakes, Castroneris, Kimball, Rizzo, and Wilson. Green. That's your top ten. Hang on. Power goes on the inside to protect people coming and trying to dive into him on turn one. Nice, smart move. Defensive driving there. And there goes Conway again. He's, got, he's already has 50, maybe 100 feet in three corners. Pagano on the outside in the blue and white car. Can't get it done. And Dixon has moved up. Castro Nevis. Oh, and there's Vizo. contact with Vizo's wing. So Castro Nevis's white rear tire caught that wing. We'll have to see if it affects Elio's car. So EJ Vizo has damage. Now, Eddie, when we drove here, this place was always very confrontational, but it just seems more so now with all the drivers trying to go for the same spot. That's that piece of front wing can puncture a tire. Yeah. I'm and not his. If that hangs on. Down into turn seven. Look at the side-by-side -side action. Kanan on the outside. And now he has the inside. Tony Kanan. That's Tristan Vautier right alongside. Whoa, and he got close to the wall. That is brilliant driving. And that's a spot that's meant for one line. And these guys got two trying to fit in the same spot. Yeah, that, that fountain section is not known for passing. And it's concrete. There's no grip there. Flat eight, flat eight. Oh, and now it finally broke off, so now there's debris on the track, and he almost made it to pit lane. Eight so, Vizo makes it to pit lane. He's heading towards Jamie Little. And they will take off that front nose and replace it, and they will put black sticker tires on. The car has been pretty good to that point until the contact. He hasn't said anything else about the way the car was handling just that damage they wanted to replace here. Meanwhile, we've got great action on the track, Marty. As they continue to work on the left side of your screen, you can see that at least for the moment, it has settled down, and this may be the first time I've ever seen it. That has happened at every restart that we've had today. They've been all bunched up. This track is so narrow and there's so little track that they can't decide or they can't find the right line. But once they string themselves out, you're really only fighting for a second place because he already Conway already has a 2.7 second advantage over power. Riding on board with James Hinchcliffe. Watch as he works the wheel. Oh, Ryan Ray. Hunter Ray has damage to his car. So our defending series champion looks like the whole right Try front. to make it back. Try to make it back. He is. That's in the general area where Simona Di Silvestro had her incident. Now, we are not full course caution. Oh, oh no, he hit the wall it. going in. And then, same place. That's the, the same, same accident that Frankie had. Yeah, that's right. Wow. This place is so narrow. Unforgiving is the best term for this. Hits the wall, doesn't stop, and keeps on going. I got to get the pit lane, folks. There you go. Oh, did you see that yeah. steering wheel snap? Again, did you see him take his hands off the wheel? Yeah. He hits the wall and then goes directly forward. This car is not going to be repairable, guys. But that did not happen to Simona de Silvestro. She did not hit that wall turning in. She just went straight. No, she uh, as we think, maybe had a flat tire. And Ryan Hunter Ray talking on the radio saying this thing is done, guys. It is almost undrivable, as you saw him. It's like a crappy car. He's talking on the radio. He said, sorry, guys. 
I just cracked the wall, got the under tray there. He came into this race after yesterday's second place finish. He was only three points back in the championship hunt. So tough, tough day here. He's going to barely make it into his pit box slowly. Two more to go. They'll assess the damage here and see if there's any chance they can get it good enough to get out and gain some points here. And one thing that Ryan Hunter Ray will now be praying for, that Mike Conway wins the race because he is not in the championship battle and he will take those all valuable first place points if he wins two days in a row. Conway now has a 4.7 second advantage on Will Power. And that's what it looks like on your screen. And Power then also has about three seconds over Simon Pagano in third. Scott Dixon has clawed his way up to fourth, and James Jakes is holding station now after falling back from the front row. He's running fifth. Fourth caution for Debris. Guys are in. Will Power. Jamie. You see him put the blacks on there, filled it up with Sunoco fuel. Down and away for Will Power. Vince? James Hinchcliffe, they went down a half turn on the front wing as well as putting on those blacks on the 27 of Hinchcliffe. Castro Nevis also pits. Briscoe, Andretti, Carpenter, and Newgarden is still in the pits. He's now five laps down. They've got a bigger issue, which we'll get you updated on as quickly as we can. Nobody in the top 11 has reds on. They're all blacks. And race leader Mike Conway stayed out. We told you about uh, Joseph Newgarden being five laps down. Rick DeBrul has the update. That's right. The problem is that he apparently got hit in the back by Alex Tagliani. It caused a problem with the gearbox. He couldn't shift. As a result, they have now come in. They've literally changed out the gear cluster once. You can see him working on the back of the car. They almost had it together, discovered there was still a problem, had to take it apart again. As a result, they are not likely to have the kind of finish they were able to get yesterday being off strategy. Now they just want to be able to finish the race. And Newgarden came from 24th and, and uh, managed to finish 7th yesterday in a great comeback. But as you mentioned, he's five laps down and counting. We're under our fourth caution. As we mentioned, we had three yesterday. And so far, eight laps under caution. So we saw most of the drivers going about 24 green flag laps. So what do you think as far as uh, how much longer? And there's the debris that they're going to be trying to clean up. That's EJ Vizos. So, well, you're going to end up having uh, some of the guys that did pit probably yeah, pitting Mike. again. We want you to stay out. Uh, we're just going to you know, save fuel for us while you're we're under yellow. And when it goes green, we need a really uh, good gap. It's going to be about five laps of green. And then we'll come in and do our pit stop. As the uh, nine car, Scott Dixon, uh, Dixon having some issues has yet to come in for his stop, but they've uh, detected a slight sensor problem in the gearbox and uh, uh, having to go to emergency mode on that nine. So keep an eye on uh, Scott Dixon, maybe having some uh, mechanical issues here. Okay, well, we'll sort that one out. Keep an eye on the number nine, see if that issue gets worse. As uh, we are under our fourth caution, we'll be back after a word from your ABC stations. All right, let's uh, check in with Jamie Little. She's caught up with A.J. Allmendinger. Second race in a row for A.J. Allmendinger. Crash on the first lap. I've got to think it had something to do with this injured thumb, A.J. No, that's just a poor excuse right there. Just a huge mistake by me again. I mean, it's, uh, you know, start of the race, trying to be aggressive, not get, not, not kind of get sucked into everything and then just made a mistake again. It's, um, God, I don't even know what to say. It, I just, I apologize to Roger, everybody, Team Penske, Quicken Loans, everybody that uh, puts the effort, all my guys. It's, uh, I'm embarrassed, honestly. It's embarrassing for me. Uh, I'm heartbroken. Roger deserves better than that. You know, the sponsors, such a great event here at, at Detroit. You know, Bud Denkner, everybody's put on such a great event. You know, it's, um, I don't know where I go from here. I gotta, I just, just, uh, I'm heartbroken. I, I just, I don't, I don't even know what to say anymore. It's uh, hopefully Will and Elio can go win this thing. Roger deserves it. He, uh, I feel so lucky that he believes in me, and that's not even close how I want to repay him. So, figure out where I go. All right, AJ Allmendinger will be back in the Sprint Cup Series next weekend, and we are going green again, Marty. You can hear the disappointment as it is Mike Conway with Scott Dixon right alongside. Now the top four have yet to pick. Kimball and Wilson as well as Dixon and Conway are back to green. Oh, look at the dive by Will Power in that Verizon number 12. Now Will Power did stop, so he's on a different fuel strategy, some new tires, more grip. 
always very aggressive. And there goes Conway again. Power pitted on lap 20. You're right, Conway has pulled away again. There he is underneath. Power under. Oh! oh. Car into the wall. It's Sato. Sato. So Takuma Sato. Okay, keep it running. Put it in reverse if you can. Ran out of fuel yesterday and now runs it into the wall at turn three. It's dead. Okay. Remember, he's got to stay in the car. Remember, he got out of the car stay yesterday. Stay in the car, buddy. Stay in the car. Keep your belts on. He was... Let's watch here. Oh, he just gets touched a little bit by Charlie Kimball, or is it Tristan Vautier? Looks like possibly Vautier, and he ends up just not having enough room to get the turn completed. It's not, not only a question of room, it's also when you get on the concrete and there's no rubber, they don't seem to be able to have any grip to, to get any rotation from the car at all. We've seen that all day. That is Vautier in the 55. He's got room here. There's still a lot of room. Yeah, you know, should have given the guy on the outside just a little bit more room because you're basically keeping the line so wide for him, he's got nowhere to go, and as we saw with Takuma right into the barrier. Let's set it to Rick DeBrule. We got Charlie Kimball in. You see he was running in that top four. Comes in, does a very clean stop. He liked the way the car was set up this morning. Vince? See Justin Wilson pulling away. They put on those sticker reds from the black for Wilson, his first stop of the day. So those guys were running. Uh, Justin Wilson up front. Now only two cars have yet to pit. There is the 67. Joseph Newgarden has gotten back out. He is six laps down. So the way things are cycling through right now, it is Conway and Dixon that have yet to pit. Then on lap number nine, here's the group that did pit. Third place, Dario Franchitti. Fourth place, Tony Kanaan. Fifth place, Tristan Vautier. Then sixth place, Will Power, and seventh place, Simon Pagano, pitted back on lap 20. We have completed 24 laps so far. So we're seeing three different strategies play out here, guys. Based on what we're seeing with all these increased cautions versus yesterday, which strategy do you like? I don't think you can really pick one at this point. Right now, I think Power is looking better because, like you said, he pitted a little while ago, and he's running sixth. It's too early to be able to say which one is the right one at this point, and there's so many yellows. Running our fifth caution period right now, as there you get a good glimpse of uh, Will Power right behind Vautier. And as we go on board with Tony Kanan, let's listen in on his radio. You copy that? You copy that, TK? Yes, yes, I copy, man. I keep reminding you all the time. My head hurts to do that. So... Okay, bud. Okay, but I, if I don't hear a copy on a good thing like that, I need to hear it. I'm sorry about your finger. Okay, I'm sorry. Now, remember, he has an injured right thumb that happened back at Long Beach, got aggravated at Sao Paulo, and that's what he's talking about, that pushing of that button actually hurts that thumb. Just lifting his thumb up and, and focusing on the button, obviously, is pulling that tendon again. Here's where the injury occurred. Tony went in, and bam, right there, it just snapped the steering wheel on him. You can see he was holding it at the time. And then, at Sao Paulo, ouch. That didn't help it. Vince, you've got more? Well, you see in that video, Ryan Harper working with uh, Kanan, taping that hand. Harper from St. Vincent Sports Performance in Indianapolis travels with Kanan all the time. So uh, they've certainly given that thumb plenty of attention after yesterday's race, giving it treatment, ice, massage, and wrap. Kanan on the move. He's up to fourth. It's the second half of the duel at Belle Isle. A little update on Ryan Hunter Ray back in the garage area right now working on his race car. Now I just talked to Michael Andretti. He told me they are going to be able to repair it enough to get him back out. The damage you see the guys working on the right front. The right side is where all the damage was from the front to the back. They replaced both wings, suspension, all kinds of components. But Michael said at this rate with so many cautions, if they can just get him back out there, they can salvage some points. And we're going green. Let's go back to Marty. He's eight laps down right now and 15 points out of first place as they run on the racetrack. We're getting ready to go back to green flag racing. Now remember, the first two have yet to pit and we are getting ready to complete lap number 27. It is Conway on the inside, Dixon right alongside, then Frankiti, Kadan, Vautier, that's green your top flag. flag. Green, green, green. Oh, contact! 
Jack, Will Power gets hit, several cars going around, and now we have a major melee through turn number one. You can't win the race on a restart, but you can lose it. Power got punted from behind. Graham Rahal gets out of his trouble and gets back underway. So Briscoe's in there. Zavedra smoking in the six car. There's the number four of Briscoe. Vizo. Vizo's in there with the five. Ed Justin Carpenter. Wilson, Ed Carpenter. What a mess. There is Justin uh -huh. Wilson, finished third yesterday. Had a great drive. There's Ryan Briscoe. He had a pretty good run going yesterday until he hit the wall late in the day. EJ Vizo, his luck here at Belle Isle for the second day in a row, runs out. Yes. And Ed Carpenter got stuck in that oh, accident also. The 98 is also involved. There's Alex Tagliani. Boy, he is. He's you couldn't even see from that so one shot. There are so many cars. You he, can't see who's packed in there. No, I was going to say, he's at the front of the parking garage, isn't he? He has no chance of getting out in the valley. He has had the most horrible of weekends here. Yeah, I don't understand on a start like that. You've got to get yourself through the first couple of turns and spread yourself out, especially now that we have that long run going down to turn three. That's the time to get yourself situated so you have the opportunity to pass. It looks like Briscoe wants them to try to get him refired. I was looking at his car from the, the distance there. Well, he he wanted able to, to do that exactly, Marty, before the uh, cars came around so he didn't lose a lap. Do what we do. That's not happening. Let's go back and show you what happened here on in here. this restart that brought out our sixth caution, double what we had yesterday. Looking for the out. guilty party. Every, you're right. Everybody spread out. Let's see what's happening. There it is. The car that's on, and he gets through with it. Isn't that always the way it generally happens? So we'll have to get a different view to see exactly who that was. So was that Castro Nevis that got bumped from behind? No, it was Will, uh, Will Power. Will Power. And it was Sebastian Borde in the seven that got him. NASCAR style. Then there was no room. There was no room to pass. One, two, three, four. There's eight cars. Just drives in a little bit deep. Remember, we talked about how bumpy the surface is here, but he just got into the back end of Will Power and started to drive him around. He had nowhere to go, and then everybody else just had block lanes. I, I have never seen something like that on a street course. On board with Hinchcliffe. Remember, he gets to the inside, almost gets through. This, I think he escapes just with a broken wing. Oh, yep. There was just not enough room between the wall and Power's car. Yeah, I'm going to... Well, Jamie Little has caught up with Justin Wilson, as you see Hinchcliffe in. Jamie? Yes, as they continue to work on the 27 machine, Justin Wilson walking down pit road. What exactly happened from your vantage point? Uh, something happened up ahead and I was coming through the corner on the outside of Charlie and you can't see a lot because the rear wing is so big you can't see through it and everyone just stopped and uh, it's just a roadblock. The, the complete track was blocked where I was um, at the wall just trying to stop before piling into everyone. So disappointing day. Um, got a good race car and it seems like everyone's getting a little crazy today. You know, yesterday was nice and calm but today was crazy. Why do you think that is? How are the track conditions? Are they any different from yesterday? I think the track's gripping up a little bit and people are optimistic and just trying to make something happen and uh, yesterday everyone was trying to get through today they, they're attacking and you know I was early on trying to pass uh, EJ Vizo going down to three and uh, just so we hit the brakes he jinxed only a couple of inches but that bent my front wheel and from that point on we're kind of struggling and limping but um, it's just the way it goes. All right thanks Justin and your teammate Mike Conway just pitted and Scott Dixon made it out ahead of him on pit road so the racing goes on Mark. Yes, it does. And that's the, the last two to make that stop now as uh, they get back out with Dixon in front. So the first pit stop for these guys comes on the lap number 29. And it's going to be interesting to see because you would have thought that the pace car would have gotten through the accident and these guys would have filed into the queue. So it'll be interesting to see because of the accident, the pace car wasn't around if these guys have actually almost made a lap up and where they are as far as as um, as far as that is concerned. Ten total cars involved in this incident. There is Will Power. This is uh, Tate, and boy, he is very hot. 
You know, but I got to say, when you're walking, you're not hurt. The last thing you want is for somebody to come along and, and grab your arm, unless he's headed off towards uh, going and meeting somebody. But he was planning uh, on meeting somebody. Uh, this is yeah, he wants a shot at uh, Sebastian Bourdais. So the cleanup is going to continue for a while here as we are under our sixth caution, double what we had yesterday. And uh, we're let me ask, halfway through. Let me ask this. Interest to see what he would have done if he had been able to get up to his car because uh, he was going so slow. You see most people throw helmets and he obviously threw his gloves. I I'm going to come back. I want to talk about the fatigue factor. Is that a potential reason for some of this going on? Let's talk about that when we come back. We're going to take a break. Stay with us. We're coming back to Belle Isle. We're under our sixth caution. All right, well, as we continue our Indy duel in Detroit, today has turned into a crash fest. Our sixth caution, 10 cars involved in this one. There's James Hinchcliffe being pushed back towards the paddock area. You saw Ed Carpenter. There is EJ Vizo. He managed to get refired and got back to pit road. Let's check in now with Jamie Little. Well, we caught up with Will Power. You see his car on the hook right now. You were very frustrated out there. What was the frustration? What led to all of this? Uh, it was, uh, you know, and double file restarts and, and Bourdais got into the back of me. So, um, you know, it's just disappointing for the Verizon guys. We're having such a good day and moved, moved up well. But uh, that's racing and uh, hopefully the guys can get it back out there because there's a lot of cars out today and we can maybe get some points. Not that it's, it really matters anymore. We're so far back, but uh, yeah, really disappointing. No wonder Bourdais, man, he once was a champ and now he's a chump. <laughs> All right, thank you. Well, they're going to try to work on his car and get him back out there. Very frustrated, obviously. And Elio Castroneves, the sole remaining Penske entry, is into the pits. We'll follow up more on Will as we continue to watch this. Now, they are working on the rear wing assembly. As they're going to replace that. And you mentioned Will Power's points position. Right now, he would be... Yeah, well, um, gosh, he's 76 points out, guys. It's over for him for this year. And a guy that's finished second in the points championship for, what, the last three years? Always had a run towards getting uh, a victory for the championship, but uh, no chance this year. Now, this is something that it, we're going to have to watch. Notice that Dixon and Conway come out of the pits. Now, there's the blend line right there that they passed. And Kanan was ahead of him, so was Tristan Votier, but they were held up by all this damage. So we're waiting to see if IndyCar is going to recycle everybody and move the positions around. I think they're going to have to. I'm, I'm almost at the point where I'm wondering if they should just do a red flag and stop and clean up the mess and put everybody back in the order that they should be in. Well, now you see there is Mike Conway, and he is actually shown back in the sixth position. So uh, we'll double check with IndyCar, see if this is the correct running order. There's Sebastian Bourdais, who's not on uh, Will Power's Christmas card list. What did he say? Champ to chump? Yes. Seems a little bit aggressive. All right, we have race control radio. Let's listen in. Once again, everybody, race control is working on a reorder program. Everybody be patient. We'll get this thing sorted out. We're just about there. Uh, once we get an order, we'll read the order over the race control frequency, and uh, we'll give you plenty of time to work it out. So there you get the words straight from the officials that will be making the call. Let's check in now with Vince Welch with Alex Tagliani, who uh, suffered a hand injury in an incident yesterday. I know that uh, can't feel any better after what happened there, but uh, take us through what actually transpired going into that turn, Alex. Uh, for the last one, I mean, uh, I think um, Todd and Brian were saying that uh, Bourdais initiated the whole thing, and um, and we were just a victim on the outside, made some passes, and uh, there was nowhere to go. Uh, it was unfortunate. The first one was Carpenter just nailed me from the back on a restart. So it's it's a shame for our team because we really have a good group of people, the Barracuda Racing Team. Uh, 
we have we have pace. We uh, we just can't get a break, and I don't know what kind of voodoo stuff we'll have to do to finally uh, get what we deserve here. Tough weekend for Alex Tagliani, and you also saw James Jakes come in for service, Marty. Yeah, he had a punctured tire, is the word we got, so that's why he had to make another stop. Now I I want to talk about this because here's the cleanup still going on, and is as Elio Castro Nevis is back into the pit. Gary, go ahead and plug it. Plug it, Gary. They're working on that side pod on the left side of the race car. So There's that continues. Very hurt race cars. And Carpenter's back in pit lane. And uh, Jamie, what, what do you hear? Well, everybody's talking about how so many cars are out. If they can just get the repair and get them back out there, they can get some uh, points, much needed points. Of course, Ed Carpenter was on the pole for the Indy 500 last Sunday. And then remember, Hunter Ray, Ryan Hunter Ray back out. They repaired the right side of that car, so they are thrilled about their options right now as you're on board with Ryan as uh, changes and things continue to happen down here in the garage. EJ Viso down here working on his car, trying to get him back out. Meanwhile, repairs continue on the 12 car. All kinds of things happening down here, Marty. Yeah, you guys got to have your track shoes on today. Hunter Ray is in 23rd right now, 11 laps down, but there are four cars right now listed out ahead of him, so he will be able to pick up some points. Now, you saw that view from Ryan Hunter Ray's number one Team Andretti Autosport car. There's live streaming of in-car cameras on the IndyCar 13 mobile app. That's only from Verizon. All right, I want to get back to this topic. Here are the points as Marco Andretti, as they're running, would retake the lead over Elio Castroneves. And you can see that Ryan Hunter Ray, this is why he's back out there because he's shown 16 points. And there's the rest of the top 10. I want to ask both of you, this is the first time we've done dual races back to back. We had three cautions yesterday, very little contact. Certainly nothing like we've had today. Six cautions. Is fatigue a factor in any of these incidents? Who wants to go first? I'll go first. I don't think so. I, I think Justin Wilson was right. I think the track has gotten more grip on it. Concrete is very slippery when you run the first day like they did. And there was only one line. But today everybody is angry that Conley went out and did what he did. And now everybody is pushing as hard as they can. Now, Scott, I'll let you get in on this in a second. But we want to go back and show you here. Ryan Briscoe. So he's doing the right thing. Looks like he just ended up touching the back of Elio. Probably got hit himself. And when it all accordions like that, that's what ends up happening. You just become a victim in this crash, which was exactly what happened with a lot of these guys, Marty. And before we get your comments, uh, Vince has caught up with John Barnes. John, was there actually damage to Ryan's car or was it just stalled there? Uh, it just uh, it stalled there. There wasn't any damage to it and they didn't restart it. I don't know what the heck they were doing down there. But uh, they, he sat there, they pulled him away and stood there with the starter in the back of the car for probably 45 seconds. First time uh, Ryan Briscoe has been in the four car. What's been your assessment of how he's handled it this weekend? Very happy. Thanks, John. Marty? And because of that, Briscoe is shown as one lap down. And for anybody who hasn't been following the series news this week, J.R. Hildebrand had been in that ride. But, of course, he crashed back at Indianapolis the second time in three years. He had also completed. J.R. was second to last in laps completed this season. And you just can't have that kind of performance, basically, right? Any time that you are not performing in racing, then uh, you always have to worry about somebody coming on and filling your seat. And that's exactly what happened. Okay, I still haven't gotten your thoughts on the fatigue factor, but we... Uh, let, let, let's do it right now. Uh, you know, what did you think? I don't think it's a fatigue factor whatsoever. These guys train. They're in shape. These guys run the 24 hours Daytona, 24 hours Le Mans. They compete for eight hours in a car for their opportunity to run their stint, you know, three or four times a total of eight hours. Absolutely don't think it. I think it's over-aggression and uh, trying to be too aggressive too soon on the restart like we saw. And especially because the track has changed, you don't need to do that in turns one and two. You need to get out of two, get a run going down to three. And this is not bumper cars. And these guys are now paying the price for it. Okay, let's listen in on race control. 10, 7, 25, 83. Behind them are the 9, the 18, the 77, 67, the 4, followed by the 6, the 1, 16, 3, and 20. So what you're hearing there, that's the shuffle, and you can hear the 9 and the 18 are going to be set back much deeper in the field than when they originally came out of pit lane. 
All right, so we'll get this all sorted out, get them realigned, and go back to green flag records. We've had 20 laps under caution. We're back after a word from your ABC stations. So we are halfway, 35 down, 35 to go. Let's give you the mother's race rundown and have another bad day on lap number one for A.J. Allmendinger, second race in a row where he hits the wall and takes himself out of the race. He put the blame squarely on himself. And Ryan Hunter Ray on lap 16 does the same thing as Simona Di Silvestro had done a little bit earlier. He just did a little differently. He hit that inside wall and then went straight into the turn eight wall. Then what has put us under our sixth caution, a 10 lap melee started when the seven of Sebastian Bourdais got into the 12 and then pick your poison because very few made it through totally unscathed. On board with Brian Briscoe. Briscoe actually didn't have any serious damage, but stalled the car, lost a lap, waiting for everybody to get to him, to get him re-fired. So right now, we have 13 cars on the lead lap. Brian Briscoe, the only car one lap down. And we show now a total of six cars out of the race. Power, Tagliani, Wilson, Sato, De, De Silvestro, and Allmendinger. Now, remember that we heard the call from race control. Notice that Scott Dixon went from literally coming out ahead of everybody to back to seventh. Mike Conway is shown in eighth position. Our new race leader is Tony Kanan, our Indy 500 champion, guys. That is definitely a reshuffle, but all that was artificial because there was the accident and the cars had to get reset up. But I think it's going to change the whole complexion of the race. And we'll see how long it takes Conway to make his way through these cars because he has been definitely the fastest car on the track. And there he is. And remember, a $50,000 bonus from Sonax if he can win. Let's listen in on his radio. So just to let you know, Mike, uh, we're going to do 13 laps on this set of reds, and then we're going to get him off the black off and go to the end. Uh, you're P8 right now, or will be P8. And uh, every, everybody in front of you is either going to have to stop twice or save a lot of fuel. So I think we're not looking too bad, actually. Let's talk about, first off, why they came in so late. They wanted to stay on the black wall tires as long as humanly possible. They were hoping to get a short stint on the Reds. They really weren't happy with the way the Reds ran at the end of the race yesterday. But as the, with the way those things were shaking out, it was so confusing. They weren't sure they would set the tires out, then they'd bring them back. Now he's back out there. They're comfortable with where he's at. He just needs to do what he's been able to do so well, which is get people on the restart. But now he's a little further back, and he's got to be careful that nobody causes problems in front of him. But this is a total Totally different race from him. He's been able to start up from the restarts and just take off and leave everybody. Right now, he's got Dixon in front of him, and that's not going to be an easy guy to pass. And every other car he's got to pass to make it to the front. But the rule for the tires is that you have to run at least two laps on both tires, the black sidewall and the red sidewall. So they have now uh, going to be able to complete that. If they want to do another yellow here shortly and come in and do their next stop, they put the blacks on and they'll be uh, very, very fast. E.J. Vizio back out on the circuit, running in 17th, seven laps down, Jamie. Showing 17th right now. They brought him behind the wall, uh, replaced the rear wing, the front wing, the wishbone on the left rear and put blacks on. All right, so we're getting ready to go back to green flag racing. There you see the cycle for E.J. as he was as far back as 21st at one point. All these cars have been repaired. You have to remember that it normally takes a week to get these cars ready. They're throwing suspension on it and trying to get it right, and it's it's tricky. Our leader is Tony Kanan. We've had three lead changes, six cautions, as we mentioned. There are the lap leaders. Conway has led the most with 25, and there is the biggest movers, and also those that are out of the race. All right, it's Tony Kanan now on point, driver's right. Alongside is Vautier, Frankini, Bourdais, Andretti, and Kimball. And we're green. Question is, will we make it through? Number one. That is so tight. And we have been informed from IndyCar officials, car number seven, Sebastian Bourdais, the third car in line, will have to serve a drive-through penalty. And that will be for avoidable contact, which he did when he went into the back of the 12 of Will Power. And look at Conway slice his way through. That's Charlie Kimball and Dario Franchini. He made it look easy. It is easy. Oh, it is not easy, but no, he's making he's it look making, easy. He's, it, for him, it's easy to do. Oh, man, this guy is driving like we haven't seen somebody drive in so long. He made mincemeat of three Ganassi cars, just one, two, three. Oh. Unreal. Keep your eye on that 18. Look at this. This is all top four. And there we go. And 
Charlie Kimball going after Dario Franchitti. And he's got him. You see Dario getting a little loose there. That's Dixon right behind Dario, so... Chip Ganesha can keep tabs on all three of his cars just by watching one camera. You can see how bumpy the course is just by some of these camera shots, and that's what you feel as you're driving this, pounding up and down your spine every time you get through this track. And here comes the drive-through penalty now, being served by Sebastian Bourdais. And Conway is now third. Yes, drive through. Do not come in. Drive and he has to go through. at 50 miles an hour. Meanwhile, Tony Kanaan still out in front. But both those guys in front are going to need to pit here very shortly, leaving Conway back up on point. Vautier taking a look, and he's going to try and go for the lead, and he has it. So Tristan Vautier, the rookie, gets around Tony Kanaan. Well, it's interesting because Vautier during this race has not been saying that his car is that good. He's kind of been struggling with it, but the race has come to him, and now he's in the lead. But look who's right behind him. Conway almost <laughs> collected the wall. No, I'm not so sure he just didn't tag it, to be honest with you. Well, he doesn't look like he's slowing down, that's for sure. I have never seen a car cut through traffic like that. Dixon got around Dario Franchitti, so Dario's got an ill-handling machine right now. And Dixon trying to pull up on teammate Charlie Kimball. On board with Kimball. Who's having a great run, a much improved run from when he was where he was yesterday. And Kimball yesterday uh, ended up uh, 14th, started 18th today. And the big question is, what corner does that 18 car get around the 55? Which one? <laughs> take a pick. I'm, I'm going for three. I'll take turn three. I'm going to choose seven. I think I'll choose three. Tristan Vautier leading his first ever official IndyCar race right now, and he's looking in his mirror saying, please don't pass me. Oh, he's actually uh, he's holding on. Defense. Yeah, now Conway will actually work well through all this tight stuff and be on his tail when he comes out of six. I bet you'll get him down in seven. Charlie Kimball right there trying to close in on Tony Kanaan. And there you see Scott Dixon as well now here we go through turn six this is the second long straightaway and you found an interesting statistic on straightaways didn't you well if you combine these two it's almost the same length as the race they have in brazil so it's long but it's not that long so Botier last pitted on lap number nine we are working lap number 40. Conway has to be careful because this whole group is catching up to him. The more cars that are behind him, somebody might try a pass and something could go wrong. Pit, pit. Yep, there's the call. We're going to red. Pit, pit, pit. We're going to red. That is Bodier's team telling him he can pit and he makes the turn. And will he come in? Yes, he does. Well, Bodier has a record. He's the only guy that wasn't passed on the track today by Conway. <laughs> Okay, just so we understand to see what happens with race control, he entered into the pits. Go ahead, Rick. Yeah, yesterday, Bodie called his car a nightmare. Today, working much better. They're hoping they can get a fuel in and send him out, and that this will be his last pit stop for the day. So they're thinking they may be in a good position. Interesting to watch when he came into the pit lane. There's a white line that you were supposed to have all four wheels underneath that line when you enter into the pit lane. He did not. If race control saw that, he will end up having to serve a stop-and-go penalty. On wires right now with Charlie Kimball, and Kimball has moved into the third position, and he is doing a fine job of holding off teammate Scott Dixon. Vastly improved from yesterday, very aggressive, and as you said, he's in front of his two teammates, Dixon and Franchitti. And not only is he in front, Scott, he's almost uh, pulling away and trying to make a pass at Canaan. Well, and Charlie finished uh, fourth back at Barber and 21st at Long Beach, and 10th back at Brazil. Rick. Well, if at that last restart, they were on the radio reminding him about the push to pass, say this was the place to use it, make sure you can use it best. And think about this, last weekend at Indy, he was sick on Friday and Saturday, made it through the race, but he said he couldn't really eat full few, full few food, that is, until Tuesday. So he was sick the first part of this week, he finally got better, and now he's doing great in the car. All right, Rick, thanks for the update as uh, Charlie K Kimball continues to... Now, you mentioned push to pass. He has four left. Now, if we go back and take a look a little bit earlier and look at Conway. And then watch this move. <laughs> and look at the lead he has stretched.
stretched out now. He is just on a rail. It is three seconds. Mike Conway owns Bell Isle. We might have to call it Conway Isle by the end of the day. There goes your race leader. Here comes Tony Kanaan. We know he's going to have to stop in the not too distant future. We'll go side by side so you won't miss a thing. Charlie Kimball has taken over second place, as you saw on side by side. He uh, inherited the position when Tony Kanaan had to pit as he was running a little low on that precious thing called fuel. And right behind Kimball, it is Scott Dixon and then Dario Franchitti, Pagano, and Rahal. That is your top six. Kanaan came back out in 12th. Kimball has dramatically closed the gap on Conway. He's 1.5 seconds before. Kimball can see him now. Dario Franchitti peels off and heads down pit road. Scott, do you think he's trying to save fuel? Vince, let's take it to you. Dario Franchitti has really liked his race car, but he says the problem is the fact that when they first get out after taking fresh tires, he doesn't have any grip. Four block stickers and Sudoku fuel for Franchitti. Let's see if the grip's a little better at the beginning of this stint. Now 26 to go, and with our history of cautions today, that could be and should be his last stop. That's close. That's it's cutting close. it very, very close. It's actually one. Every, everybody made 24 yesterday, so if he gets one more caution, two laps, it should be a, and from what we've seen here today, I'd be a big better on that pit, one. there'll be 16 or 17 to go. You've done six laps now. Look at Kimball closing the gap. At one point, it was like four seconds, and now it's, it's down to four tenths. And they both have the red sidewall tires on, so the ones that offer more grip it makes you wonder because Conway came out so quick and aggressive. Did he overheat the tires? You see him fighting with the car to try and get the power down, going onto the straightaway, and maybe a little slower in the middle of the turns. Simon Pagano getting around Scott Dixon. So the man who led every lap at the race here at Belle Isle Good last year, Marty. Scott Good Dixon, P3 now. P3. gets bumped Jump. back to fourth. As you know, very competitive drivers. We see him, as you mentioned, just get ahead of Scott Dixon. Not had that much luck this season, but right now, Charlie Kimball's looking, looking, looking. Oh, hang on. And Down aggressive. The... Can he make it stick? It looks like for the first time in two races, the 18 car got passed. I'm, I'm speechless. And nicely done. Charlie Kimball is your race leader. And I think you're right, Scott. I think the red tires have he, just given up on that 18 have, car. He can't put the power down. Remember how strong he could do that before. Now, this is a little bit of blocking going on. You're allowed to do that this year. Try to take the lane away from the driver if you think he's headed that way. But Pagano almost got it done, so he knows what Conway's going to do the next time around. Pagano, a smart driver, will just watch to see where Conway has difficulty with his car. He'll time it right, be smart. Remember, Pagano was on the black sidewall tires, the standard tires, guys, which seem to last a little longer than the reds. And here's what backs it up for you. They both last pitted on lap 29 for Conway and Pagano. Kimball last pitted on lap 24. But you may ask why if you reds are going off. Hit this left, hit this left. And you heard the call. That was Conway's radio, if I'm not mistaken, saying, great job, Mike, pit this lap. So he's within that fuel window, they'll get those reds off. Rick? Graham Rahal has been kind of on an off strategy, but because of everybody's falling out and his moving up, it's working out pretty well. You see, they came in, quick blast to Sunoco, fuel and he's out. There's only 13 cars on the lead lap right now. You know, Will Power has gotten back out. You saw that on side by side. He's shown in 20th, 15 laps back. Conway desperately needs a new set of tires. There's Sebastian Zavedra in the six car. Now, remember, he crashed out of yesterday's race, and he's got a good run going. He's running fifth. Here we go, down the straightaway. This time, Pagano has the inside line, and he's going to take the spot. And it looked like also Saavedra was about ready to start his move on Dixon. I wouldn't be surprised. Yes, he's got that one completed. So it moves Zavedra up as well. Here comes Marco Andretti as he's trying to put some pressure on. 24 laps to go. This is the third race that Charlie Kimball has led in his career. Three laps at the 2012 Indianapolis 500 and three laps back at Barber this year. You think about the experience level difference between Saavedra and 
Dixon. Rick? Mike Conway brings the car in, talking to the team a few minutes ago. Their goal was to leave him out on those red tires until someone started to catch him. As soon as that happened, they brought him in for tires, Sunoco fuel, and he's back out. Now he wants to go fast. Dick? Dixon says the car is just too loose. They made a front wing adjustment, put on the blacks, took off the reds. Wait to see where they cycle in, and it looks like I think Conway got out ahead of Dixon. Meanwhile, Charlie Kimball stays out. Now Simon Pagano cycles into second. Now he's good for fuel all the way to the end. So Conway back on the blacks. Boy, I love the shot from the helicopter streaking down towards turn seven. Pagano closes a little bit. The big question is now when will these two pit? Pagano has five laps in hand over Kimball. If Kimball comes in, then Pagano needs to be able to try and go as quickly as possible for those next few laps before he has to pit to try and stretch a lead up for the guys that are behind him. Eddie, why we can't show it right now because we want to keep our camera right here, but James Jakes, who last pitted on lap 32, has moved into third place. And Marco has moved, Mark and Betty's moved into fourth. This will give you an idea what that gap looks like. Now we'll get a chance to show you. So remember James Jakes backing up early in this race? Well, now he is coming forward. And there is Marco Andretti right behind him. Marco had a miserable day yesterday, and today didn't start out much better, but here he is. He's in the mix. He's been doing that a lot this year. He always comes through at the end of the race. He's become a lot more patient than he had been in the past. So those two are going after each other for third. And here is the battle for the race lead as Charlie Kimball continues to lead. He has now led three laps. And he's three-tenths of a second ahead. That is nothing. Five different leaders today. Hey, we're going to want you to pit this guy. Pit this guy. Hustle, hustle. I always love that when they tell you from the pit lane, hustle, <laughs> hustle. What yeah. do you think I've been doing out yeah. here? <laughs> Gee, why didn't you tell me earlier? Yeah. So Kimball is laying out. They told him to pit this time, and it does look like he's hustling. Pit, pit, pit. Pagano right behind him. Now will he make the turn? Yes, he does. So Pagano will inherit the lead. He'll become our sixth nice different leader. Got a clear pit in. Charlie Kimball brings it down pit lane. And interesting enough, he was on the same red tires that Mike Conway was on when he made that pass. He was just getting a little more out of him, but they had the same concern that the red tires were going to go away. They've got tires on. They put the Sunoco fuel on. They give him a go, and he's out. So he will come back out on track. Now, that means Pagano, who last pitted on lap 29, is in the race lead. Then James Jakes, who pitted on lap 32, is second. He's in a very good position. Marco Andretti's got one more stop in his future. He last pitted on lap 20. He's running third. Dario Franchitti, who pitted on lap 44. And here we go, three wide. Hang on, this could get dicey. And this was because of where the pit exit is. Oh, Conway on the outside. Looks like he's made it. Vautier oh. almost lost it. Here comes Graham Rahal in the yellow number 15. Whew. You know, Eddie, what I love about these new cars is they're so drivable, and these guys are driving them like wild horses. Yeah, they're getting away with murder, though. <laughs> Who's Passing test? each other, underbraking sideways. The other guy is going the other way, under power. And that all stemmed from where the pit exit is, because it's very confrontational. When Charlie Kimball came out, he caused a bottleneck and allowed this to all happen. And Conway is P5. That is 6th, 7th, and 8th with Conway up in 5th, then Vautier, Ray Hall, and Kimball. And who says street races are boring? After a great race in Sao Paulo, we've got a dandy going here. Hang with us. Well, you got to see a couple of passes, a pit stop by Marco Andretti. And let's remind everybody, if you like this action, don't forget the IndyCar Series moves to... Prime time Saturday on ABC, 8.30 Eastern for the Indy Firestone 550 at Texas. Cannot wait for that one. Can't wait to see how this one ends up because we still have several cars running up front that are going to have to make stops unless we have more cautions. But we've had a nice long green flag stretch here. So it's Pagano up front, then James Jakes, Dario Franchitti, Mike Conway, and Marco Andretti. That is your top five. But remember, the first two, Pagano and Jakes, 
Last pitter on laps 29 and 32. We are working lap 53. So you can take those first two out. So really the battle's going to be between Frankiti, Conway, Andretti, and Rahel. And we only have 18 laps to go. Well, right now, to give you an idea, the gap between second is and third is 23 seconds. And that's Jakes and Frankiti, but if Frankiti's going to be the guy that's able to stay on fuel, the difference between Frankiti and Conway is three seconds. But looking on our timing monitor right now, Conway is turning laps in excess of just over one second, a lap faster than Dario, who he's chasing. What else is very interesting? The first four are Honda. First four Honda, then a Chevrolet with Andretti, then three more Hondas with Ray Hall, Dixon, and Charlie Kimball. And we saw that yesterday as the Hondas did very well here on the street course. Let's listen on the radio. All right, Mike, you're racing Dario up there for the win. Everybody else is going to have to stop, so it's you and Dario. Uh, isn't that what you guys just said? Uh, I think so. <laughs> and now put that as two seconds a lot faster than uh, Mike Conway did in... Forget the seconds. He sees them. He sees them. Yeah. He, he smells can them. smell them. Yes. He knows that's Frankiti, and he is the most confident race car driver on the track right now. It's almost as if he has a different type of car. Oh. Yeah. You know how when you're getting close to somebody, you just had that little extra energy you got in the brakes later on the gas faster? Oh, yeah. you can, oh. It's like smelling blood in the water. And he's tucking up. Won't have enough room here going into seven, but hang on. It's, it's not over yet. Don't think for a second Frankiti's just oh. going to lay over and say, why don't you go ahead and win? Vince? Well, one of the issues for Frankiti is he has to conserve on fuel because they're trying to make it to the end. 44 was the last lap he pitted, so he's not only trying to hold Conway back, but he's trying to do it while conserving, and you guys know how that goes. That's so a good place to be. To keep Conway behind you. Yeah, so that counts him right now probably as two laps short, but he's one of the best at what we call manufacturing fuel. Just carrying the speed through the turns. You can see how he's sort of coasting in through the braking zones. But Mike Conway certainly has a better car under braking. It comes down to shock absorber, springs, how the car rides Here over the Here we bumps. go. Conway's on the push nope. to pass. Can't get time. it done. No. Interestingly, so. Conway has two push to pass left. And Frankiti has seven. Not so. Just in case you're new to the series, let's explain what push to pass is all about. It's a happy button. You push the button <laughs> and you get more horsepower, more speed. But as you always say, Eddie, it's like a debit card. And it you consumes as you all go. Your it's not like a credit card. Let's send down to Rick DeBrule. Simon Pagino, the leader of the race, up in front of these guys, is going to bring his car in for a pit stop. Team describes the car as awesome. They put in Sunoco fuel, make a quick tire change. This is the car he wanted. Remember, he finished third last year. He's hoping to do it again, but he only had about a five-second lead coming in, and that's going to be enough to have a lead going out. That's going to be close. Remember, James Jakes, now he pitted on lap number 32, and now here you can see there's Pagano coming he's, out. He's going to come out in the lead. And he is going to come out ahead of those two. Now, Jakes, we're still waiting for him to make a pit stop, and there is Frank Keedy. So maybe that extra distance is going to pay some dividends well, for Pagano. do. As I mentioned, when Jakes came in, he just had to continue getting on the gas. I mean, I am very surprised. Uh, what's what we've been saying? You have to, he's going to really have to hustle on those cold tires. And a lot of these accidents on the restarts have been in the first lap, maybe because it just wasn't enough grip with cold tires and concrete. And this battle continues between Frankiti and Conway. That is third and fourth. James Jakes is in front by 20 seconds over Pagano. But remember, Jakes last pitted on lap 32. We have 15 laps to go. James is going to have to make a stop. Go if you, have to. you just heard the call from Dario's pit. Let Conway go if you have to. Well, Conway, that's, that's going to be helpful because his times have slowed up since he's been behind Frankiti, and he does need to be ahead of Frankiti, so he has a shot at catching up to Pagano, and then obviously Frankiti needs to stop pushing as hard as he does because he doesn't want to come in and need a splash of fuel just with a lap or so to go. And Pagano's not hanging around waiting for uh, Conway oh, no. to catch up to him. He's, he knows he's got 14 laps. 14 to go. Conway P3. Give Pagano's pit crew a tip of the hat because because they got him out very quickly. And I think it surprised me and also surprised
Franchitti's team because remember they said, hey, you know something? This is for the lead. Through turn three, and again, Conway not able to close up enough to make the pass on Dario Franchitti. So the laps are winding down. We have 14 to go. And while these two continue now, here's the other straightaway down towards seven. Can Conway get him here? And Conway's on the push to pass. Not sure he got out of the last turn well enough. Nope. Well, he's going to have to do it under braking, and he's got him, and he is going to finish the pass. So move Conway ahead of Franchitti in the third, but he is down to one push to pass. So we can also Pagano. tell you that Simon Pagano, who is in second, also has only one push to pass. We're still waiting for James Jakes to make his pit stop. As he has that 22-second lead. Question will be, can his crew get him out before second place comes by? Nice, nice and smooth now, OK? Nice, easy stop. Take a deep breath. Trevor, just be calm, dude. Relax. When he taps you, you... James Jakes just set, fastest lap, 1 minute, 17.9. That's the way to do it. Give him full credit. Boy, his e his star is starting to rise in the IndyCar series, that's for certain. We were talking about being tired. This is when training really makes a difference after that race they had yesterday, and this is a tough one today. 22-second lead. Will it be good enough to keep the lead when he makes the stop? This time by, there will be 12 laps to go, so he won't have to be in long for fuel. It'll basically be the tires. Rick? James Jake brings that car in. His parents are here. His girlfriend just flew in from England to be here for this race. Remember, he had a flat tire earlier, was able to survive that. They put the snow fuel in a short to whatever quickly the question is can he get a lead nobody in sight can he get back out 50 miles an hour it's got to feel like snail's pace right now there goes simon pagino so pagino is going to be your race leader and jakes will come out in second that's ed carpenter lap traffic in between the two and there is mike conway at the far end of the track we've got to go away for a moment for a word from your abc stations we'll come back and find out who wins Simon Pagino right now is your leader. Three seconds back, there is James Jakes. He has five push to pass still remaining. And then third is Mr. Conway. He is 4.6 seconds and coming fast. Well, Conway was running laps probably about a second quicker than Simon was at one point in time. But right now, as we see Will Power having difficulty with his car, remember he had that accident in that melee and turns one and two, and then he uh, went back repair. behind the wall repair. and repaired yeah, it. One more there one you go, he smartly side. moves out of the way. You can see how wild that thing is to drive, but back to Conway, he was absolutely going faster than Simon at one point in time, but now they seem to be just about running the same speed. Let's check back a little bit farther in the field. Elio Castroneves with Sebastian Zavedra right on his backside as it is 10th and 11th on the track. And again, Team Penske having a tough day as uh, Elio, the highest finisher today, and he's running in 10th. The driver with the advantage right now is Pagano because Conway will have to get past Jakes, and Jakes isn't exactly hanging around. Savager so may have tapped the wall. As you can see, he has slowed. And all wheels seem to be pointed in the right direction. I think he just maybe overdrove it into the turn. He had a good run going on Castor Nevis, and then Castor Nevis closed the door. Nine laps to go. He stays out, so obviously he feels confident in the race car. Now, Tony Kanaan has come in for a splash of fuel, but they're going to take tires as well. Wow, with nine to go. Boy, that's a long yeah. stop. It's not a splash of fuel. That was the, the tank was pretty dry. Well, there is Simon Pagino. As uh, let's go up to speed on this drama as it unfolds with nine to go. Up first is Rick DeBrule.
Simon Pagino leading this race. The one thing you want to hear from your team when you're out front is that the car is awesome, and that's what they're telling Simon Pagino. The problem now is he's got James Jakes chasing him. James Jakes is in second place, and he has five pushes to pass. Therefore, if he can use those properly, if he can get up close to Pagino, he may be able to take advantage of that. Once again, Jakes happier with the red tires today than he was yesterday. Now, back behind him is Mike Conway, and we've seen what a tear he's been on, but he's still got to be able to catch up to those guys. A little earlier when he was on the reds, the team thought he might have actually had a slow leak in those tires, but now he's on the blacks, and he's trying to reel these guys in. Vince? Well, way back is Dario Franchitti. Franchitti's been in a fuel conservation mode. You see, he started 16th. He fell back to 18th, has been up as high as third, but a top five run for Franchitti in this uh, type of an afternoon is certainly a successful one, but they're trying to stretch their fuel to the end. He's being hounded by his teammate right behind him in the red car, the target machine of Scott Dixon. Dixon has three extra laps of fuel in his car. They're not so concerned about getting to the, to the finish, but it's another very solid day for Scott Dixon, who had a top five performance yesterday. And Dixon was on his push to pass, which gave him that spurt of power to go down the backstretch and get past his teammate, Dario Franchitti. You notice Dario had seven of them. He can't afford to use them. He needs all the fuel he can get. Jakes is catching Casino, and Conway is dropping back a little bit from Jakes. And Jakes is on reds. He's the only one on the first three to be on reds. Seconds, ten seconds, seven one. There is Simon Pagino. His lead over James Jakes, 2.8 seconds. There's Jakes. Top of your screen is Mike Conway. That's first, second, and third here at Belle Isle. Well, you saw the problems for Tristan Vautier on side-by-side. -side. He's now a lap down in 14th. Sebastian Bourdais also got swept up in it, but he was able to control. And we did not stay, or stayed green, did not go yellow. Bourdais is now shown in 11th as he lost a few more spots. Let's get you reset. There is your race leader, Simon Pagino. His lead is 4.6 seconds. He's upped it over James Jakes. And Mike Conway is now 5.9 seconds back. So for a while, guys, Conway was closing, but that has stopped. And Pagino has turned around, and once he's got into a rhythm, is now clicking off laps faster than both Jakes and Conway. Conway, remember, was quickest, but right now, Pagino's turning laps a half a second quicker. In fact, he turned the second fastest race lap back on lap 64. And you can see that we only have five laps to go here at a minute 17. And he's just shy of a five-second advantage on Jakes with only five, four, four laps, laps to go. go. Mike, four laps. So now four laps, and that's not enough time to make up about now 6.4 seconds. So the $50,000 bonus from Sonex, they may be putting it back in their company bank it's, account. It's, it looks like it's safe for the moment. Makes me wonder because Mike Conway's not a regular driver on this series if maybe he's just started to get a little bit worn out in the last quarter of this race and can't pedal that race car as fast as he could before because he's just started to slow down. Oh, you know, in the last 10 or 15 laps or so. And the best time to come on strong is always at the end, and Pagano is doing that. There is your race leader, Simon Pagano. He finished on the podium here last year, coming home in third place. And, of course, yesterday the 77 finished 12th after starting 6th. Saw Jakes' team looking on from their pit box, wondering if their man can catch him. Next time by, there will only be three laps remaining, and it's a 4.7 second lead. Team manager Rob Edwards looking on, who masterminds everything here for Schmidt Hamilton Racing. And that HP 77 car right now has been running so strong. Plus five seconds, three laps to go. Plus five, three laps to go. That's the information from the pit lane from Rob Edwards from the timing stand. Information that the driver wants to hear, but... 27 of one in front, a lap the cars. They said they'll help us. 27 of one, a lap the cars. They said they'll help us. Oh, so there he's telling him who's up in front, the 27, James Hinchcliffe. They've already made communication with that pit box to tell him, hey, can you give us some help here? Don't hold us up because this track is so tight, so narrow, and difficult to pass. There is James Hinchcliffe, and uh, there is your race leader. And Hinchcliffe is the car they were talking about, so they've obviously communicated amongst themselves, and now all Pagano has to do is just keep at the pace he's at and pass Hinchcliffe, and he should be fine because after this lap, there'll only be two laps to go, and he has over 5.1 seconds advantage. And you Jakes. saw that uh, our last camera shot on James, uh, Jakes and Mike Conway. Conway is closing down on second place. 
Here it is from the Fountain Complex, and there is the gap now between second and third. So it looks like right now, Son and Pagano is in control, but who's going to take second? Oh, you saw oh. that the yellow machine of the Sunny Barbecue Machine just starting to squirm through the turns there. He's pushing it past the limit to try to get close enough, and the back end steps around, too. This is when you're sawing at the wheel, Eddie, and all you want to do is get up close enough to have a draft. This is when it counts. Down into turn number one. Where earlier, we had a 10-car melee. Now we go on that long straightaway down to turn three. Can Conway get close enough? There goes the leader, Pagano. Two laps to go. They have one more pass, push the pass each. And by that, you're talking about, uh, well, Conway has one. Conway has three. Pagano has one, but Jake's has three. And he is probably going to use one coming up here. And he's looking in his mirrors, which is always difficult to drive on these last laps when you look in your mirrors. But you talk about being tired, I can guarantee you now yeah. they are tired. He's right on his gearbox. Yeah. And will he hit the button? Yes, Jake's hits the button. Here we go. This is going to be probably his last chance. Conway hit the button as well, so he's used his last one. But he hit it late. I don't know why he waited till halfway down the straight. You need to do that because it lasts for 15 seconds. You need that run to gain momentum getting into the turn. So now he's out. And going around this section, you don't need extra horsepower because you're off the throttle most of the time. Next time by, there'll be one lap to go. Conway all over. James Jakes, meanwhile, Simon Pagino. Here comes the white flag, 2.35 miles away from victory. And as easy as Mike Conway made it look yesterday, Simon Pagino is doing that today. His car is going over the bumps. It's handling everything on the circuit beautifully. Uh, he's too far back, too far back to make a run. So he'll get one more chance going down towards turn number seven. Meanwhile, Simon Pagino is just saying, please, nothing go wrong with the race car. Uh, these two guys, their heart rate is pumping right now. They're driving as hard as they can. Right now, your suit is full of sweat, and all you want to try to do is just get to the end, but you're pushing as hard as you can. Don't think he's close enough, Eddie. And do you think Pagano's hearing all those little noises in the car, thinking everything, just make it that last little bit. You can feel and hear everything on those last laps. Here we go. Down into turn seven, through the fountain complex again for the last time. Stay on the line. There's Pagano. Here is lap traffic, the 12 of Will Power. That could play in uh, Conway's favor. Here comes Conway taking a peek. Can't get it done. Meanwhile, Simon Pagano, he could be and will become the sixth You're ever winner this year. Who's going to get second? It will be James Jakes coming across the line second. Our winner yesterday, Mike Conway, third. Our third first-time winner this year, and there is a very happy Sam Schmidt. Let's send it to Jamie Little. Sam, I saw you right before this race. Did you have any idea your driver and your car were going to be that strong? Tell you what, man. Best lap of the race. The guy's driving on a mission. He really wanted this very badly. Congrats to all the crew. Both guys worked really hard this weekend, and uh, amen. Congratulations, Sam Schmidt. First win for Simon Pagino, Marty. All right. Well, we're going to allow you to watch as uh, the celebration continues. And there goes a nice drag racing burnout. Good job, Simon. There's your top five. Pagino, Jakes, Conway, Dixon, and Frank Keaty. So here are the unofficial results in race number two behind our first-time winner, the third this year in the series, Simon Pagano. You have James Jakes with a great run today. Mike Conway, well, fell too short of the bonus, winning yesterday, finishing third today. Scott Dixon, Dario Franchitti, then Marco Andretti. He is now tied in the points with Elio Castroneves, who finished in eighth. There you see the 12 cars that were on the lead lap, and everybody else, well, not the kind of day that they wanted at all. All right, so as uh, we get ready, to, uh, let's send it down to Rick DeBrule. And a very excited Sam and Pagano getting his very first victory. He finished second at Long Beach last year. Didn't have such a great day last the, yesterday, but now he's just having a hard time getting out of the car because of the Hans device. Let's wait for that moment. Come on, Simon, get out here. Yeah! <laughs> 
Simon Paginot, how does it feel to have your very first IndyCar victory? Man, there were a lot of things going on in the cockpit in the last two laps. I can tell you that. It's uh, unbelievable. I don't know how we did it, but uh, the car was mega fast. HP team did a, a fantastic job. Honda, it's been amazing. Uh, I certainly had more, more horsepower than anybody else out there right now. So thanks to uh, everybody. You know, it's... Uh, I want to thank my family, everybody around me. Uh, this wouldn't have happened without them. And uh, man, it's a sweet feeling. One, uh, I hope there's more to come. <laughs> Simon Pagano, very happy. And let's give credit to that crew in that last pit stop. What a race. Honda sweeps the top five spots. And we've got a tie in the championship. What more could you ask for in one day? Well, Marty, his girlfriend surprised him by coming in for the race. Maybe have her here every week. How big a finish was this for you and this team? Uh, it's huge. You know, it's uh, huge for a lot of people. You know, the Ray Hall Letterman Lanningen guys have done a great job this weekend. And, uh, you know, this one's for Honda. You know, three Hondas on the podium in Detroit again. You know, they've really worked their, their butts off since uh, Indy. And, uh, and we're proud of them. And the uh, number 16 Acorn Stairlift stem side car was just magical today. Well done. James Jakes, a career best runner-up finish today, Marty. All right, let's show you how the points are right now. A tie at the top with Elio Castro Nevis and Marco Andretti. Ryan hunter getting back out really helped him here. He is 15 out, and you can see on down through the list, two guys that are missing that we thought would be in that top 10, guys, Dario Franchitti and Will Power. I, I'm still amazed at what happened today, and to see Helio Castroneves and Marco Andretti after not a very good day to make it to the front of the, front of the list is, uh, is pretty special. It is, and you know something I've noticed so far is that the cars right now, being as competitive as they are, we're into this season so far, and we don't have a Ganassi or a Penske car winning a race so far. The deepest that the Team Penske has gone into a season this far without a win, 1978. That's how long it's been. Usually they have at least one by now. But they are leading the championship. With Even with all those problems, they're leading the championship. So I would never take Penske out of this, but we are going to a very fast track next. Well, coming up next is ABC World News or your local news, except on the West Coast. Now, our next IndyCar race is next Saturday on ABC. It's the Indy Firestone 550. That's at Texas Motor Speedway. We're on the air at 8.30 Eastern. Congratulations again to that man right there, yes. Simon Pagino. This has been a presentation of ESPN. For entire ESPN on ABC crew, I'm Marty Reed. Till we meet again. Back to racing at Bella. Whoa, and look at the start by Conway. Big crash, AJ Allmendinger. Whoa. Now more contact. Whoa, and he got close to the wall. Oh, contact. Several cars going around, and now we have a major melee. Simon Pagino will become the sixth different winner this year. And there is a very happy Sam Schmidt.